Well, we've just finished uh, celebrating uh, Thanksgiving, uh, a time in which uh, is, is a, a secular holiday. Um, but um, what, what was the, the, the overarching idea of, of, of celebrating a, a day of Thanksgiving? Thanks to God for provision. Okay, thanks to God for provision. The, uh, again, the, the idea of, of, our, of our secular Thanksgiving here in America and other countries have you know, other days of Thanksgiving. Um, but it, it is uh, a time in which uh, the, the people gathered after having traveled across the ocean, having been you know, weathering hard, difficult situations and, and storms, of, of, of literally storms, but also just the trials of life. And they were, uh, they were able to, to stop and give thanks to God. Um, is, is Thanksgiving um, a, a theme in the scriptures? Okay. Um, so... So America didn't, didn't make it up, right? Okay, all right, so don't have a, a corner on the market. So, um, and what's another word for Thanksgiving? Gratefulness. Great, gratefulness, okay, and how about another word? Gratitude. Um, it's again, it's, it's the expression of, of, of being thankful for something. Um, can you think of a, of a time in your life that you received something that was unexpected? Um, that you were extraordinarily grateful for. Can, can, can you think of anything offhand? Any, any ideas, volunteers? John. Retirement. Retirement. <laughs> 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 I, uh, you know, uh, about 20 years ago, I didn't understand the uh, idea of retirement. I sure do now. I, I sure am looking forward to that, that, to that time. Um, yeah, wife. The day you met your wife. Awesome. Very cool. Got some good points there, huh? <laughs> what else? Just something that you that maybe was unexpected that you that you that you, that you were grateful for, or maybe you did. You, you, maybe you knew it was going to happen, but you were still grateful for it. Mary Beth. When the children were little, um, we had a couple at our, our church that we were going to at the time that brought us a complete meal for the whole family. Around yeah. Christmas time, they brought us a complete dinner, and we didn't know anything about it. Aww. Very nice. Good surprise. Was it Sharon? Did, did My job. Your job. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, being grateful for something is, is, is um, what, what do you think it, it takes in order to be grateful? What, what are some, some precursors to, to being grateful? Attitude. Attitude, for sure. What else? If, 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 you're, if you're raising your hand and, and you don't see me looking at you, it's because... Um, <laughs> You're a big light blur to me right now, so it, it, I might as well have my glasses off right now. So um, I'll probably try to step over here so I can kind of like see you guys a little bit better. Um, but yeah, um, it's gratitude is something that is is a mark of a of someone who who is conscious of that they are not entitled to something. And maybe uh, maybe a child doesn't understand that yet. Uh, but to be grateful for something is means that that we that we we. Uh, we say something, but what else do we do? What else is there? What's, what's even, even more than just the words that are, that are important? Yes? You feel that we wanted to receive anything from God, but He gives you everything. Okay. Well, we don't deserve it, but He gives it to us anyway. Okay, good. Um, so, how about this? Um, um, a rich uncle um, that, that we all have, of course. Uh, says to you, I'm going to give you this shiny red sports car. Brand new. Maybe you don't like red. You can pick whatever color you want in your mind. And you say, oh, thank you so much for this car. You give him a big hug. Say, thank you so much. Take the keys from it. Go get in the car. Drive it around and, and drive it into a pole. Brand new. I mean, whatever car that you have in your mind. I have a Ferrari Testarossa uh, racing through my head right now. It's not candy apple blue. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Red is the only color for, 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 for a Ferrari in, in my mind. So, and, and he goes, what did you do? And you're like, oh, I just drove it into a pole. You said the words. You, you, you expressed gratitude in, in a way, but did your actions back it up? Guess, guess who's not getting another shiny red sports car anytime soon? So it, it, it's like that. There, there are actions that go with just being, I mean, we, we, can, we can feel grateful, so to speak, 
And we can say thank you, but if our actions don't back it up, we have to question ourselves uh, whether or not that, we're, that we, we truly understand what gratitude is. Tradition teaches us that man is a rational creature who exists in, 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 with the possibility of unceasing communion of love with his creator and is oriented towards him with an insatiable disposition of gratitude, thanksgiving, and praise. It means that we were created for something. We were created with a capacity of which most of us fall short. I, I certainly know that I do. And the world at large has not even begun to plug into this relationship with God. Um, gratitude is the mark of God. Um, not that God needs anything, but God is the one who teaches us to be grateful. Rational creature. What, what do you think that it, it means that we were created to be rational creatures? Yeah, we act irrationally sometimes, but what does it mean for us to be rational creatures? Is a tree rational? Why? It doesn't think. Okay. Um, is, is a dog rational? I know we're going to have a whole bunch of discussions on <laughs> when I'm going to toss cats in there. Yes and no. Um, they're, they're, they, they have the ability to process information, but not in the sense that we as human beings do. Only human beings of, of all of the earthly creation was given this capacity to think, to commune with God in, in, in the way that he desires. Give me an example of another rational creation. Something that has the, the capacity to think and make choices. An angel, that's right. Um, what else along that same vein? Messiah. What's that? Messiah. Okay. Messiah, yeah, absolutely. He, 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 he took on the, the body and, and the reality of what it means, means to be human. Well, there's, there's other angelic creatures in, in the spirit realms, right? Um, we think of angels and we think of guardian angels, but there's, what's that? They're, they're, they're the fallen ones, of course. Um, but um, there are the uh, creations, the angelic creations that God um, has created uh, that are still loyal to him uh, that we don't often think about. So, what we do when we begin to contemplate, and here's what we mean by, by contemplating ideas or, or God himself, we begin to focus on his qualities. And we begin to focus on, on things that, are, that help us to, to expand our minds. Because if, if we don't think of the angels as rational creatures, they're not robots, right? They have the complete ability to, to express joy, right? How do we know that we have, they have the ability to, to express joy? Anybody think of a scripture? Even if you don't know the particular chapter and verse, because I can't tell you. Well, the, the, the angels rejoiced when man was created. Okay. So they sang with joy, the morning stars. Sang with joy. Um, what, were, what, what did they say? Glory to God in the highest. And what? Peace on earth. Uh, they, so, the, so we have to see them, again, as, as, as creatures that have the ability to express and, and think. Just a long layer. What, what, did, what, what, did, what did they say that we as human beings were, were created a little lower than? The angels. So we have this, and, we're, and I, they were completely baffled when God began to create humanity. Um, they, they, they were baffled because they said, you're giving man this ability to think and to have free will. Um, but they're so fragile. So, you know, in, 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 in the sense, because we weren't created like angels. Uh, and so there was, there was this, this interesting uh, quality that they, they looked at and, and they were, kind of, they were you know, kind of befuddled. Does anybody use the word anymore? Befuddled? I was feeling befuddled the other day. So it says that God created uh, freely, uh, created man out of his exceeding goodness in order that man might participate in, in the divine goodness. And the Lord creating, created um, so that his creatures, the recipients of this blessing, might gratefully commune with him and offer thanksgiving and glory to him and be partakers of divine glory. What does it mean to be partakers of, of, of divine glory? Does it mean to be shiny? What, what, is it, what, what does it mean? The love of God. What's that? The love of God. Okay, the love of God. Okay. We participate in something. It uh, means that, that, we, that we, we act in and take upon ourselves something that we... It's not of our human nature. We take part in something that's what? Greater than we are. 
greater than we are, that is of, of the heavens. So to participate in the divine nature means that our human nature is, and one school says our, our human nature is being changed or you know, destroyed, and the, 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 uh, the other school of thought that I, I happen to appreciate is it's being healed to return to how it was in the garden, that, we, that we're being healed uh, to get us back essentially to where Adam and Eve were in the garden. How were Adam and Eve? Well, how did they, did they generally react before they sinned? What, what, what was their state? How did they, did they interact with God? Did they use an intercom? Did they, like, they, they, they talked face to face with God. Um, it, it's what God always wanted. It's what he always desired was that his, his creatures, especially humans, would be those that would commune with him. Uh, uh, FaceTime is nice uh, on the phone. Um, it's, it's a useful tool, um, but you don't sit across the house. Uh, hopefully, you don't. If you do, don't, don't, please don't say it out loud. Um, we, can talk, we can talk later. And, and talk to your, your family members across the house using FaceTime. Now, uh, FaceTime is literally FaceTime, that you spend time in the presence of someone. So, to be grateful creatures, you could say that we spend time with God. Could we not? Um, what do you think that we would, we would do in the presence of God to express gratefulness or gratitude? Okay, worship him, yep. Praising, Praising. what else? Listening. Wait a minute, you, you, you're saying God talks to us now? I've heard him say it. He sure does, but we don't, we don't still ourselves long enough to listen. Silence is the place in which we can hear God the best. Um, not with l loudness and, and, and everything around us. It's time sitting in his presence to be, just to be spending time with him. So, when we give thanks, what does that say about us as human beings? We could say that even, even just to, to, to each other, that, that we express gratitude. Somebody does something nice for us and, 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 and we say thank you. Um, when, when we're like this with God, how can we show God that we're grateful to him? Okay, tell him. What else? All right. So you've been blessed with um, a, a, a family and, and a home. Um, what are some ways that you could show gratitude to God? Taking care of those things that he's given you. Okay, taking care of, of, of what we've been given, not smashing the shiny red sports car into the, into the pole. Danny? Show gratitude by doing what he asked us to do. Sharing blessings. Okay, sharing blessings, yes. Submitting to him. Okay, submitting to him is, is a way of showing gratitude, yes. How we take care of our own bodies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, how about hospitality? It's something that we, we spoke on a few weeks back. You know, sharing what we have. Um, inviting people over for, you know, if it's a cup of coffee, um, make, it, make sure it's good coffee. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a tea um, or or a meal, um, it's oftentimes how we, how we can show somebody, uh, show God that, that we're grateful by sharing what we have. Taking a friend out for, for lunch. Um, anyway, it's, it's about showing God through action and not just simply words. Um, words are important, but, but it's also about you know, actions that come behind it. On Thanksgiving Day, um, what, what could we have done? in order to, 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 to find within us our own gratitude. What's the purpose of, of a mezuzah? What does it do? Reminds us. Okay, it reminds us. So um, it's all throughout the scriptures, there's, there's this constant um, um, exhortation for us to remember. Um, to, so a remembrance of what God has done for us. Um, have you ever been in a really bad state of mind where everything seemed to be going wrong and, and you're just having a lousy day. Um, I mean, the cat doesn't even like you. I mean, have you had one of those days before? Um, what's what, what's an, an easy way to get out of that bad attitude? 
What's that? Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Okay, and how could you begin to climb out of that pit of not so greatness? Do something for someone. Do something for somebody, something, something kind. Okay, singing praises to God. If you start remembering how God has met your needs in the past, how he's provided for you, and he's brought you through trials and struggles, and the more you do that, the more you realize that you have a lot to give thanks for. Yes. A remembrance of his blessings. Um, are, are we um, just simple American consumers that, you know, we want something, we, we work for it or whatever, and we finally get it, and then we move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing never really even appreciating what we have acquired. I mean, it's, it, it's our society, which you know, if, we're not, if, if we're careful, not careful, we will find ourselves becoming like this. We don't give a second thought, everything's disposable. Um, but the in remembrance of what God has done for us, if we're having a, a bad time in our life, whatever that is for us, and to look back upon us, and how, how has he carried us? I mean, one of, the, one of the songs that I thought was really beautiful today was he, he's carried us through so many, many, bad, no, many terrible times. Um, can you remember a time in your life where God carried you through and you weren't sure how you were going to make it through? And in the middle of it, maybe even you didn't know what to say or how, but you, you were conscious of, maybe then, but definitely on the other side of it, that God carried you through this. He got you through, whether it was through other people being encouraging or whether it was, it was something. There was something that, that you, 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 you could just... You can't shake the fact that God was the one who carried you through this hard time. To be mindful of those things so that when, you, when we find ourselves in that place where it, it, everything seems to be going wrong, we look back and we praise God. Are we only the people that praise God when everything are, are going right and everything is just smooth sailing and blue skies? Oh, man, we're going to be unhappy a whole lot of the time, aren't we? To be people of gratitude means that we're, we're not limited to just being thankful for when everything is good. Um, think of Job. He had a pretty good life. He had a whole bunch of stuff, a nice family. He had a lot going for him. He was happy. And then God said, I'm, I'm going to test him. And in the middle of that struggle, it doesn't mean that he didn't suffer, because he did suffer greatly, but he found a, a way to hold on to something that didn't shake him in the middle of the storms. Um, you remember one of the phrases that God says, or sorry, that Job says about God? What's that? Though he, he slay me, yet will I trust him. Okay. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He gives, and he takes away. Blessed be Hashem, blessed be the name. He said, he gives and takes. Um, he's God. But we go, but God, I want to be God. I want you to do things the way that I want to do them. Isn't that how oftentimes we find ourselves? And then we kind of have to come down to earth, so to speak, to say, you know what? I'm not God. And I, I, I trust that you are, Father. You help me to have your mind within me. It is a way that we have to be constantly going back to. Why does God constantly throughout the scriptures say remember? Because we forget. Because we forget. Um, and it doesn't get any easier, I'm finding, as I get older. I seem to forget even faster. Um, but thank goodness for text messaging myself to, so I don't forget. Uh, we have to remember, we have to be conscious people. If we're simply just drones going through our day, punching the clock, time to make the donuts just going through the day, and we're not conscious of, of what we do or, or, or God, then we find ourselves you know, unhappy a lot. What is another way, if we find ourselves in a bad attitude, to move out of it? What is the, the greatest thing that we could give thanks for in our lives, next to a, a spouse or a loved one? For salvation. For that coming to the point in which we recognize that we have come into God, we have come into the covenant. Um, I think that so many times in our, our modern society, we don't understand that, you know, that baptism and, and coming to faith is a covenant. Um, it's something that, that happens sometimes too easily, and, and, and people, don't, people take it for granted. We can take it for granted if we're not conscious, if we're not mindful of this. What are some ways that we can 
and give thanks to God for our salvation. Okay, sharing what God has done in our lives. What else? Praying. Okay. So we've come in, into covenant with God. What's the big deal? What changed? What changed for you? Our focus, our interest, our desires. So many things change rapidly, and, and also looking back, other things change gradually. Okay. Um, and, and so as, as we begin to begin our life again, life journey with Christ, it was um, realizing that the relationships I had before were not going to be beneficial to my walk with the Lord. Okay. And those things had to change. All right. That's so. Shift in priorities, um, an understanding that some things that are not good for us that have, has to change in our lives. We have to um, remove some things, situations, habits, people from our lives. Um, so to be grateful people means that we are conscious, we're conscious of this, what it means to be grateful. To be, um, so if we say to God that we're grateful, um, and we don't change. Are we really grateful? No. Um, if we if we say God give me patience, and He does, are we grateful f- for what we've asked for? And I'm not encur- I'm encouraging you to ask for what, what you, you desire to be changed in your life. Um, don't believe the rubbish that says don't ask God for patience. You want patience. I want patience and need it. Um, we have to trust that God is in, I always ask for whatever it is I want in his mercy. I, I like that caveat of his mercy. Because he desires to, to, to form in us all of the qualities that, that, are, that are his. Amen? I mean, he desires to form in, in, this, in this holiness, which is a, a conscious mind of being separate from evil and sin. Um, that's a good thing. He wants us to be more, more compassionate towards people. Uh, if we have the mindset that says, you know, God, don't teach me compassion because I don't, I'm not sure what you're going to do in, in, in the whole process. No, we want to be people that, that trust God. Um, God is the God of, of today is the God of Abraham. Uh, he's the God of David. Um, he is, is the God who has always been and always will be. He, he doesn't change his, um, his colors or his, um, his, his uh, tendencies, characteristics from one half of the book to the other. He's the same God. Uh, and so he's able to, to work in our hearts in a much more powerful way now because we are, have been receivers of the Spirit of God within us. Without the Spirit of God within us, no true change can happen. No, no true transformation of, of this human being, of this heart, can ever take place. Uh, man's will can accomplish a lot of things, but without the Spirit of God, it, it, it doesn't amount to anything. We're building something beautiful within us. We're building a place, um, a temple in our hearts, just as beautiful and if not more beautiful than the, the temple in Jerusalem ever was. Because we carry the same God that, that, that lived in the temple there, and he, he lives here, right? Amen? And, and it's real or it's not. I mean, I, I, if you say it to, to, to average person, do you believe that God lives within you? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, then why don't we treat our this body and this, this person like the temple that we, that we look towards and we look towards the east as, as a custom of our people towards the place where the holy temple stood. But a holy temple is standing right here praising God. Amen? There's nothing so good as thanksgiving as a weapon against the enemy. And it is good and sufficient to repel all devices of the enemy but in everything to give thanks to God. It means that in the words of the apostle, he says in all things give thanks. Wait a minute, you mean even in the hard times, even in the times that are, 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 are trying, even in, in death, even in, in suffering, we're to give thanks to God? Of course we are. Um, 
The fathers always knew this. King David understood this. Our father Job understood that, and he expressed it in a beautiful way. But to give thanks. Should we give thanks even in, in times that, that, that we don't have anything? Or that we have less than we would, than we would desire? So, there's multiple stories through, throughout the ages of those that, suffered, that faced death. They were martyrs. And they praised God even in the midst of, of, of giving their lives over. Do you, do you know what martyr means? Literally? What? One who bears witness. Um, one, one who gives the demonstration of truth. Um, but a martyr is someone who lays down their life for something, amen? Amen. And, and you and I are called to be those that express gratitude by what? Showing. Okay. Laying our lives down for one another, for our, for our spouses, for, for our children, our grandchildren, um, our brothers and sisters. How can you and I lay our lives down? Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that we, that we die physically, but how can we lay our lives down? Walk the extra mile. Yep. What else? Consider the interests of others before your own. Okay. How about investing in each other? Um, spending time with each other. Um, being, being those that, that give um, a, 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 of our time. Um, what's, a, what's a way that we can be those that, that lay down our lives for, for a friend or, or for a spouse? Okay, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. You have to, have to deprive yourself of your own self. Okay. And say no to you so you can say yes to others. Okay. You Re refrain from judging. Okay, refrain from judging. How about when you know that this person, whoever that is in your life, would really like to go to this place to eat or would, would really like this? Um, something. But you say, you know, but I really want Mexican food. Um, to, be, to, to say, you know what, but I love this person and, and, and they, they would wish to go there. Um, it's, it's a way of, of putting other people first. Um, once that there were two brothers who, 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 who lived together um, in, in this home and, and they never fought. They never argued about anything. And so they, they looked around at everybody and they said, you know, everybody else seems to be having arguments. Let's have an argument. And so they, they took a brick and they put it between them and they said, uh, one said to the other one, this is my brick. And the other one said, okay, it's yours. <laughs> and they said, he said, um, no, you, you, you can have the brick. And the other one said, Oh, no, you can have the brick. They, they kept trying to give it, give it back to the other person. And they said, this is kind of ridiculous. Let's stop having arguments. It, it's a simple story to show that without cravings and without this desire to possess and control, uh, there is great freedom. And so many times things happen in our lives because we desire and put ourselves above others. Um, and so to show gratitude sometimes is, is a way of, of, of being those that lay down our lives for others. How can we give thanks during difficult times, illnesses? How is it possible to give thanks even when we're sick? What are some ways? What could we do less of when, when we're sick? Complain. Complaining. Again, it doesn't mean that we don't express suffering or, or pain, but um, do we whine and moan a lot more than we probably should sometimes? Um, can we honestly look at ourselves and go, you know what? Yeah, I, I kind of complain a lot. Um, are we honest with ourselves to know when we are? Um, how about instead of, of complaining, we were able to offer up praises? 
to God. Do you think that's possible? What's that? Okay, a hope for healing, that's right. Yeah, to express a hope, yes. Well said. Um, we have hope. We have something that is that, that, that drawing us. There's literally the light at the end of the tunnel for us um, as believers. Not there yet, but, but, but there's the light. Um, and, and, he, and he's standing there and beckoning us. You know, Come unto me, Messiah says. Well, do, are we just happy with that? Or, 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 or what do we do in order to, to even expand that hope that we have? Share it with others. To be people that, that are, are, are those that, if, 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 if people can see us, whether it's family members or coworkers or, or whoever, when they understand and know that we're going through hard times, but we're not the same as, they, as they're used to. That we, we, there's a supernatural calm some, most of the times. I'm not saying that, we're not, that, that we, don't, we, don't, we don't have times that we weep or that we're, we're not upset. But overall, there is a, a supernatural expression of God in our lives. There is something that takes place. To be grateful, uh, you know, is again is is a gift of God. What is something that we can do? to express gratitude to God. Wake up in the morning. There, there's a traditional Jewish prayer that is, 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 is a beautiful example. Um, what is, and I, I was gonna put it together, I might put it together for a little, little presentation before uh, the, uh, the service next week. But it is an expression, um, the modeane um, is a praising of God for something. Does, does anybody know it offhand? Got it right here. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, 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 the first thing that, uh, that you know, in, in, in the traditional Jewish prayers is to thank God for, for returning your soul after the night. Um, that we have a, a gratitude towards God immediately upon awaking. Um, that there is um, you know, a blessing to be able to, to bless God. Uh, and most of us are, are, are still stumbling for the, for the alarm to, to turn it off and, and, and wandering wherever you, wherever you live to, to find coffee. But what if, when the alarm goes off, instead of going, Ugh, we were to stop for a second and to say, thank you, God, for returning my soul. What's another blessing that we could, we could, we could praise God for in that same line? Thank you for, for receiving me into your covenant. Um, thank you for, for, for loving me enough to walk with me yesterday. And thank you for loving me enough to walk with me today. Um, when we remember the times, and we've, we've talked about numerous times and shared uh, in, in times that God has, has saved us from death. Uh, and, and most of us have some sort of a, a, a time in which you can think immediately when I said that to a time or multiple times when, when you know God saved you from death. Thank you, God, for another day of life. Um, the attitude of gratitude uh, is, is a beautiful thing. God loves us. And he, he finds, and it's, it's, it's throughout the scriptures and the teachings of the fathers, is that when we're grateful to God, um, what does he do for us? He's grateful back to us. He's grateful back. And, and he does what? He blesses us. He, he's blessing us. He gives us certain things because he wants to see what are you going to do with this? Are we going to hoard it? and say, thank you, God, thank you. Or are we gonna be those that share with what we have? 
And, the, and, and it's, it's not just our, our money or, or other things. It's, it's our time. Um, it's our, our presence, actually being present with somebody, which is becoming increasingly hard with these blasted things. S- you know, stealing our, our minds and, and our ability to connect with people. Really being present with somebody. Looking them in the eye and, and truly being present. Uh, we, we, we show gratitude in so many ways by, by giving who we are and what we have. Can you think of a time when you didn't really want to pray, that you really didn't want to connect with God? It's, it's hard. Um, why is it hard for us sometimes to connect with God? Selfish. Because we're selfish? Because we're distracted. Because we're distracted. What, what, what could we be distracted by? Everything. Everything. Sports. Um, life. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's whatever's happening in our lives that can be you know, pulling us in, in a thousand different directions. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What, what's that? Can yeah. Nicole? Yeah. Yeah, walking in disobedience. Walking in disobedience, whether it's conscious or unconscious, makes what happen? It separates us from God, and our hearts become hard. Um, what, what, what is some, what's some of the best medicine for a hard heart? Hmm? To humility, yes. Um, if you have um, hard ground and you, and you want to plant something in it, uh, what, what do you do? Water it. You water it, or? You cultivate it, or? You till it. You got to break it up. You break it up. Um, and sometimes the, the circumstances in our lives are the, the till or the pick or the plow t- to open up our hearts so that we can, he, we can remove the hardness, that he can water it and, 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 and turn it. What's one of the benefits of, of using a tiller? Okay, and in, in generally speaking, in, in, in the earth, what, what, is on the, what is underneath it all? Minerals and nutrients, the good stuff. Um, the worms, mmm. And all the stuff that, that, that's rich and that brings it to the top so that what is planted then can actually grow and survive. And so the circumstances many times in our lives, hard as they may be, tragic as they, they often are, they're there, as believers, we believe that God is working in the midst of this so that the good things can come up and the dust will blow away and that the, the, the earth of our hearts that is left is fertile for growth. Amen. So one of the best ways to find gratitude is to remember what God has done for us, to recount the blessings Psalm, if you would, please, 116. The prophet King David, he had a lot to be grateful for. He could have lived as other kings, just living his days in enjoying what it means to be king. Psalm 116 and verse 1. He says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he has inclined his ear to me, and therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. What is, the king, what is King David saying? I love God because what? He hears me. He listens to me. Um, when, when, when our child comes up to us and, and, they, and they speak to us and we go, yeah, okay, mm-hmm, yeah. What are we missing out on? We're missing out on, on, on connecting with them. 
We're missing out with, with listening to them and acknowledging them and, and, and pouring into them what they need at that moment. Um, when our children express gratitude to us, um, when, when my youngest son expresses gratitude to me, using words that I've never heard before, what happens to my heart? It humbles me and it expands my heart in a way that I didn't think was ever possible. And it keeps happening. Um, the enlarging of our hearts is, 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 like, is, is like this vessel that can only hold so much, but it just keeps getting bigger to, to receive the love that comes. And it keeps expanding and expanding. We, we have an infinite capacity in these hearts to receive the love of God and then do what? Pour it out to share it with others. And a grateful person knows that they're only a vessel to receive and to pour. So the prophet is saying that I love God because he's listened to me and he's heard me and he's, he has acted. He says, the pangs of death surrounded me and the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me and I found trouble and sorrow. But I called upon the name of the Lord. And Lord, I implore you to, to deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, but he saved me. Verse uh, 12. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? For I will take up the cup of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord. And I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of his people. What shall, what shall I render to the Lord? It's a question you and I could ask ourselves every day. What, what shall I give to you, O oh God? You who need nothing. You who have everything. What, what shall I give to you today, O oh God? And we can ask him, show me how I can give to you today. And he will put people in our path that, that need whatever it is. Something. He will put our family in our, in our, in our path so that we can continue to learn and grow. How, and when we show gratitude to God by doing what to other people? Loving them. Um, being, 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 being compassionate to them. Have you ever thought that our expression of, of love to God, we could think of, of just our ability to think? That our, our ability to, to be, to be th that we have the ability to, to think. There are people today who, who don't have the use of their minds anymore through accidents or through other things. And, and they don't have that ability anymore. But you and I have the ability to think and to appreciate. That we, we begin to look at even the little aspects, to be grateful for having the use of, of our arms and our legs, of, of, of our eyes. And you don't, you, you don't appreciate things a lot of times. I don't appreciate things until they, they hurt, right? And you realize how much. When my, when my lower back hurts, everything hurts. And when it, it feels better, man, it's good. But we, have, we, we are able to see the little things that we can express gratitude to God for. We have the ability to, to sit down in just a few minutes and, and, and eat together. But many will go hungry today. Um, there's bread out there. And as our custom, if you have you know, friends or family or anybody that would be blessed by it, please, please take bags of it because um, we, we like to be able to give it away. But, but think about it. It's, that's something that we can do and we can take, share it with, with our, our neighbors. You may have somebody, a coworker, who's, you know, who's having hard times. You know, and it's just a way that we can bless them. Amen. Amen. So may we continue to cultivate this virtue of gratitude in our hearts, not just on one day uh, each year, but we begin to see every day what it means to be grateful people. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we just ask that you would cover us with the beautiful presence of God that speaks to our hearts and our minds. And Father, impress upon us, uh, till these hearts and cultivate in us fertile places that we can learn and understand what it means to be a child of God. That you love us so much and you want to give us so much, but you won't give us too much too soon. 
So Father, may we be those that appreciate what we have so that we can be prepared for that which you have for us in the future. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. And we ask this in his name. Amen.